So tell me why you like fishing that jerk bait so much, honestly. Yeah, reaction bite, those fish are, you, most people want to go, well, brown trout first. That's kind of how I reverse engineered it. They're apex predators. They're reaction feeders. They can't pass up a wounded bait. That presentation is not given to them at all. They're used to dopey, slow baits, and it doesn't inline spinners and spoons. It doesn't. It doesn't bring out the uh, of predator instinct in those things, and they are literally just apex predators. They want to eat anything that's wounded. They're going to take out uh, the food chain. So you started in applying them heavy in brown trout brown fishing, trout, yeah. and then brought that to your bass fishing. The bass fishing, it happened, um, so when Casitas dropped, all of our vegetation was up the shoreline. Yeah, I remember and that. And so all of our, um, the shad population boomed really strong, and those fish were sitting more on obvious rocky points, slopes, any kind of bank, they were sitting in that five feet to eight feet if they were uptight, and, um, you can put the trolling motor, motor on high and just burn the That's lake. a perfect zone to go throw a rip bait through. Just burn through it, and they were sitting in that zone so much. And then hmm. any of the humps that were sitting on the Arrow Island, they, two years ago, they would all stacked in there just thick. And so the, it was more the lake offered the, the opportunity to fish those fish that way. Nice. The last two years, that bite's changed dramatically. Huh. So with the, vegeta the lake going up, that vegetation at the shoreline, the shad bite all the, the terrestrial shads. vegetation yes. so the shad were able to spawn up in the bushes right and they didn't have to go into this open water and running around and find a handful of the docks that were there they didn't concentrate as much as you would think gotcha and then the vegetation was a little bit later this year and then it was thick so it was like no 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 absolutely you're talking about aquatic vegetation yes. at this yeah. point so, okay um so your your rip bait bite dies in july uh. maybe mid-june even and on the outside grass lines? It's, there was no need because those fish were inside and I've got other stuff to fish the inside. Gotcha. Like that. You know, it's funny uh, you're talking about the jerk bait by Casitas because, you know, like for me, it started with the TD Minnow mm -hmm. on all the lakes, mm -hmm. right? Pudding Stone, Paris, sure. State, Highbury. Were you fishing the Highbury. 110 or you fishing the... There was 90? only one size at the time. This one or it was the a big bigger one? one. Okay. No, not the huge one. Not <coughs> yeah, the I'm fishing one, the small bit. Not the one with that giant lip, which... Also, I had like dreams of grandeur with where right? I was like, oh man, I can get that thing down deep. Mm -hmm. They've never, I, I didn't You'd catch. You had to talk about, most yeah, people don't know how hard on that it is thing. to fish. Ever thrown a, you, you have, but if you throw like a, I throw the lucky, they are 130. Yeah. You're tired after 10 casts. Oh On man. a spinning rod, because I'm trying to get the distance for trout. Right. I'm like trying to move that bait. I'm feeling like I'm, you know. Oh. That's brutal. Yeah, it's crazy. And then my first real introduction to the Mega Bass brand mm -hmm. was the 110. Okay. The Ito Vision 110. Yeah. All right. And this is that's a bread and butter bait. This is 2004, 2005, mm -hmm. and like there was no Mega Bass America. Mm -hmm. So I had to order them through the websites and very crude websites it's or good eBay. To have Japan. So it must be nice. I was just a broke kid from La Puente. So it was a mission for you me to get these baits. The That's right, Hollis. Uh, but I got like a handful, or I got like two or three of them to start. And I'm, you know, at this point I'm fishing the Pointer 100 a lot. The Pointer 78 was my money bait. Uh, this is That's a, one of the best mid-range baits in the deep dive in 78 was. And I think like this is before the XD came out. Yeah, the Breeze. They had the breeze was a sinking one, the Japanese mm -hmm. only. The Bevy, Bevy yeah, Shad. Bevy Shad was on, that was a you mean know, bait. One or the there. Stacy 90, which I had marginal success on here and there. Stacy, I still will fish the 90, the, both the old version 1 and version 2. Huh. 2 and 3, I think, is what it was, right? Mm -hmm. But but Megabass, Megs, what's Megabass's uh, equivalent of that, which is a, it's a superior bait? I think it's like a Leviathan or something. Yeah. It's. Fish their pearl orange belly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I, I, I got a couple. I, I, I know one of my first colors was like, uh, oh gosh, Star Stardust, uh, yeah, Stardust, Stardust Shad, Shad yeah. um, TNG, and the Wagasaki. Those are like my first colors I fish. Yeah. And dude, this is crazy. Right? This is like beginning of when I really started figuring things out on the big bait too. Mm -hmm. So I'd go all the way to Casitas, drive the 90 miles, 
and I'd be towing the little 14 foot aluminum, you know, in my Tacoma at the time and get there like hopefully in the dark so I can get like a little gray light bite because sure. that's when my window to get a bite on a big 10 inch swing bait was right. as soon as the sun came up that would die for me at that time it was like a post spawn bite you know mm -hmm. like late May early June and this is when I'm like running into Doc Holiday still right. like at the lake you know and he's two the local heroes oh yeah you know he's he's one of those guys I grew up idolizing so he was still like actively chasing giant fish but after my little short big bait window would die, I started fishing this 110. And Casitas is a fairly clear lake at that time, mm -hmm. most most parts of the lake. And dude, clear meaning 10 foot, like 10 to 15 okay. foot. Like I fished a submerged island, you yeah. know, when it was actually still submerged. On the the ski um, arm or the fish arm? Um, the ski arm. What the? Which it one? was in between the the main island. This and one or this one? Are you talking uh, Casitas or Casting? No, I'm talking Casitas. Bro. Okay, jeez, oh, never mind, sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking Casting, sorry. Oh, yeah. And I'm catching... When, when guys I knew are struggling to catch, like, 10 fish a day, right? And I'm yeah. just talking, like, whatever, traditional techniques. Dude, I was catching 30, 40, 50, 60 fish on a 110. Yeah. And, like, they're wolf packing on it, and... They tear it up. I... It's crazy. They're literally fighting over it. And I'm hooking these fish, and even if one would roll off, the other one would just immediately smack it. And it's, I'm just like, what the heck did I just discover here? Like, it was. I'm nuts. having 50 fish days on it. Oh, yeah. And then. Easy. You know, and then I start telling a couple of the boys. They don't believe and me. And then they, they, they we're out there, right? And either it's like a club tournament or something, and I've got this 110. Mm -hmm. And dude, they're fishing every one of their little, like, tricked out little jerk baits. And I am smacking the dog crap out mm -hmm. of everybody like mm -hmm. 10 or 15 fish to one yeah and like and these fish are reacting the way i'm describing and they're not even looking at anything else mm -hmm. insert whatever you want sure they tried it all yeah and that was really my first glimpse into like the power of that particular bait it's kind of like there's certain baits that seem to have that it factor oh yeah but you know there, the there's X70, several of them in this room the x70 was that was one of them for you, huh? Absolutely. I would roll up to, we'd fish, we'd go pre-fishing. I'm like, I'm going to run up to Virginia noon because we got off the lake at 11. It took us an hour to get up there. We'd get up to Virginia noon. Every float tuber's done fishing. They're fly fishing out there. They're catching stalker fish. How's the bite been? Oh, it's been slow for the last two hours. Third cast, you stick a, 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 you know, a one-pound brookie in front of them. They're like, what are you doing? Like, what do you got? And you're like, oh, it's a Rapala. You know, and then throw it in, you'd swing it in, and you'd shake it off. And like the fifth or sixth class, you're like, oh, God, God oh, whoa, sh you know, and then you'd be like, oh, I got another pound and a half brown. And they're like, what kind of, what kind of Rapala is that? And I'm like, oh, it's like one of the countdown ones, but I painted it. And I don't have to, like, I'm totally bullshitting the whole time. And then, like, and then, like, oh, yeah, and I got this other one that I got in Japan. They're really hard to get. Does, does, does Rapala make that? And I'm like, yeah, Rapala makes it. Like, you're just like, you don't want to explain. It's Rapala! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so you, you'd go back and forth. And, and so you'd end up sticking 10, 12 fish. Wow. These float tubers midday. And what are they doing? Like, what are fly they? Fly fishing. They're okay. throwing. They're doing everything. Spinning rods, inline stuff, nothing. And you just smoke them and leave and go to the next lake. So we'd go burn through two or three of the little lakes. Wow. And no one, you can't touch it up there. That finesse stuff, those are, there's a native population of fish in most of those lakes. And when you eliminate, whether you're trolling or rip bait fishing, you can eliminate all of the planted fish. Huh. By cadence and speed. Fish that bait. Fast kill, fast, fast kill, fast kill, fast, fast kill, slack line on your smack. And that how much that bait swings you will you you get the more aggressive fish so literally it'll go your the dominant fish you'll catch will be brown trout brook trout native rainbow and then you'll occasionally get a stalker that you just weren't fishing as aggressive as you had started it's an end of a castle eating at your feet or something interesting like that. but you can watch those fish a lot of the times i had this whole thing because most people are like i'm casting straight out and i would parallel the shoreline and I'd fish on an angle down the shoreline and burn it down the shoreline. And I would, I would fish it fast until I could see the bait. 
and guaranteed as soon as I stopped the bait, there was two fish behind it. Hmm. And you pop, 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 stop, pop, stop, pop, pop, stop, pop. Oh, there it is. And they eat it because most apex predators, A, want to pin the bait. So that's why if you're fishing a bass in the shoreline, they're going to crush it against the shoreline because they've got something to put it on. Or with a high rising bait or a bait, they're going to pin it to the surface. So when yeah. they, people always think like, why well, I got bit at the boat because that bait's coming out of the water and that they think they're going to be able to pin it at the surface. It happens with your crankbait all the time. You're not paying attention. Happens with the tennis swim bait, bro. It has it, it, everything because they think that bait's going to come out of the water and it's their top, their opportunity to pin it to the yeah. surface. It's just a predatory instinct, I think. And yeah. brown trout are, they they fish exactly like, probably closer to a smallmouth or uh, a spotty. Interesting. They're, they're super aggressive. They're super agile. Wow. Whereas your large mouth's a little dopier. They come out, they, they tend to overpower the bait and crush it where a small mouth's going to maneuver and go right through the bait. Yeah. And, you know, put put as many hooks in its face as it can, mm. and it's going to wound the bait. You sound pretty cool, man. I'm going to have to go mess with them a little bit next year. Come up to Crawley. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, that joke is one of those. <laughs> not right away. i got to earn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. i got to go through the uh, the yeah. struggles. Yeah, yeah. you gotta, you got to wait. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. We're going to go do a segment with the other Dave and get the real juice so we can just catch one right off the bat. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. That was a jab. Oh man. Oh, that's good times. Yeah. But yeah, man, the jerkbait's powerful. It's it powerful, multi species. It's powerful, multi seasons, multi whatever. That thing just flat out catches fish. That's a fantastic bait. It's great. Good times. So tell us about this one time you made a cast and caught nineteen pounds. <laughs> I promise you guys that's coming it's coming uh, it's coming so. 19 pounds of bass on one cast that's I'll, legit I'll take out some photos that's not even legit that's just absurd mm-hmm. mm. fish mm-hmm. of a lifetime and a second fish <laughs> <laughs> what does he mean by that I don't know we're just gonna have to find out